beer. Yeah. GQ. Absolutely. Modified. Why not? With Taylor. There you go. And your shorty GQ. Yeah, how are you, mate? I'm good, I'm good. Surviving. Uh, corona greeting. Yeah, yeah, can't get too close. <laughs> what is this set up for? What year is it? And is it an automatic or a manual? Um, it's a 1992 4.2 diesel non turbo GQ Patrol, short wheelbase. I've got it set up for touring and also being able to tackle rough ish tracks, nothing too extreme. I'm not trying to flex anything out of it but I just want to be able to keep up with me mates sort of thing. Yeah, I'm sure you don't have a problem either, being a short wheelbase as well. No, I don't have a problem getting over ruts, I just pick a really good one that no one else can get because I'm really short. Nice. You set up for longer trips as well, or just short trips? I'd be happy to go away in this for a couple of weeks, as long as I got a good supply of food and beer, of course. <laughs> um, I got some pretty good water storage on board, so I'm pretty set for that. But I'd like to be able to comfortably do two weeks. Any more than that, I'd have to start seriously thinking about making a few little changes. Bar work, bash plates, all that wonderful stuff that keeps us protected off-road. Right. Let's start with the bar. The bull bar. Um, I don't actually know what brand it is. I bought it off a bike off Facebook. I had a custom, custom made bar I made with my old man. It was really strong, too strong. Almost. <laughs> Too strong. It was 50 mil pipe, 5 mil thick, so really high quality, not high quality, but heavy duty steel. Um, haven't found what brand this is, but it looks a lot nicer than what was on it. Okay, let's call it a Facebook bar. Yep, the Facebook bar. It's the first Facebook bar that you can find. <laughs> Absolutely. What's this bag here? Um, that's a old school style water bag. So before they had rear bars with multiple jerrys on them instead of carrying big big bottles of water or big sacks of water they put them on the front of their cars and it kept them cool because it seeps out through the canvas a little bit and the, the cool air hitting the bag keeps the water nice and fresh and cool yeah right that's a cool idea so you're keeping your water cool yeah because out in the desert those back jerrys they're like they're like a hot shower yeah exactly that's exactly right but if you can even in 40 degree temperatures the wind hitting perspiring canvas is going to keep it cool. So how, lo how long have you used, used one of these for? I've had that for roughly about 12 months now. Yeah. Um, I haven't really been on too many trips to use it yet, but there is one coming up that I'm going to make sure it's full and test it out. What's underneath here? Anything? Any, any um, protection? Nothing but what came from factory. Okay. So the factory little bash plate that's there, mm. um, nothing special. I notice you're missing your indicator lights or park lights? Indicators. Uh, yes, I broke this one, big stick decided to go straight through the indicator and I haven't been able to find any that suit this bar. I spent all day this morning, just nowhere in the area could find anything that matches. They all have the LED ones with the little tabs yeah, on the okay. side and they don't fill out the whole sort of rectangle area. Alright, so you're kind of thinking about a custom option now, eh? Yeah, I'm thinking, I've got a couple ideas in mind, yeah, yeah. but I won't, I won't reveal my secrets just yet. Anyone who knows where to get indicator lights for a Facebook bar, let us know. Let's run on to your side steps. No worries. Pretty solid. Yeah, obviously it's custom made, yeah? Um, I'm not too sure. 
they came with the vehicle when I bought it. Okay. I'm, I think they might have come off a ute because they kind of look the right size. Perfect for a shorty. Absolutely. Uh, he's taken one decent knock on the side and didn't mm. notice it. This is probably the first sidestep rock slider I've seen that where it's kind of in between both. Yeah. Because there's, there's enough meat to stand on. Yep. And you got the angle going. Yeah. I didn't want just a flat sort of thing because to me that's just inviting damage. Yeah, inviting hang-ups. Yep. Very neat. Very short. Jeez, you realise how short the car is. Yeah, absolutely. You? It's a door length. Yeah, yeah. But the doors are bigger. Exactly. <laughs> Rear bar. Yep. Is that custom? The bar? Yeah, it definitely had some custom work done it's to it. It's definitely had some custom work. I, well, me and my old man reattached new watches to it. It had really crappy old ones on it. Do you know what brand this bar is in? Is it a custom bar then? It is a Facebook bar. A fa <laughs> All right, another Facebook bar. There we go. The old pencil, eh? Yep. What are you towing that, that uses a pencil? There's a possibility of a trailer that might come into... Oh, the one we're not supposed to talk yeah, about? Yeah, that one, that yeah. no one knows about. So the trailer it. that no one knows about, yep. we're not supposed to talk about, the intense trailer. That's the one. We'll it just... might have a pencil hitch on it. Okay. I don't know yet. Yeah. But if it does, then I can tow it. If it doesn't, I can tow it. Okay. Or I can steal Harry's trailer. So it might be a pencil hitch on a trailer that doesn't exist. Exactly. Sweet. <laughs> so you're up to foot of two jerry holders and the wheel carrier. Like you said, in the desert, that's going to be scorching hot. So you can use that to wash your face, wash your hands, wash your dishes. Mm. All that sort of stuff. Stuff you really need water for. Drinking you can keep in the car, you can keep on the front. Yeah, yeah. And it stays safe. And if it's 48 degrees out in the desert, you can pour a tea straight away. Exactly, just put a couple of bags in the top. <laughs> Roof rack time. Radio. Is this a Facebook roof rack? You guessed it. Oh wow. <laughs> How'd you guess? <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. No, nah, I got it off a bloke. He wanted it gone. I needed a roof rack for a trip straight away within a couple of weeks. 50 bucks, deal done. The only problem with it, the rear mounts that you can see have been re-welded. The rear mounts? Yep. Oh yeah, right. They've been moved. They used yep. to sit about here. But because the bar's not for a short wheelbase, I gotta move forward. I like the mesh on this because this must be super easy to tie things down on because the holes are so big, eh? It is, yeah. I don't generally tie down off those, the thinner bits. Oh, you go off the thicker bits? Off the main uh, supports going across. Okay. Just because you can see some of the welds have broken and lifted up. Yeah, yeah, true. So I just go off the main ones and strap it, mm. and strap it down on them. Is this a bit of a, is your, would you consider your vehicle a budget build? Well, I would, but I wouldn't. I have spent some money on things that really need the money spent on them. Um, as we go around, I'll show you, I'll point out a couple of things that I have spent the money and put the time into that need good quality products. But I have tried to keep everything else within a tight budget sort of thing, because everyone's got bills, everyone's got a life to lead. And yeah, I just, I don't want to be going crazy on the vehicle. Steady as she goes, we're onto the lights now. Yes we are. Um, spotlights, I went with a good brand. I did a little bit of research just before the Coral Bay trip that I was talking about just before. Because mm -hmm. we decided to head off after work on a Thursday night. So we we're going to do the midnight riding up to, I think we got to Geraldton in the first night. And the long run up there, really wanted to be able to see where I'm going. These are the Type X Pro from Steady. The 8.5, I think they are. 8.5 yeah, LED. Inch. LED. We'll take the covers off. Just a standard spot and spread. And they work fantastic, in my opinion. Okay. I've had cheap spotlights. I've gone through the what. They're good for what you pay. I really got what I paid for with these. They're okay. fantastic. Well, that's really interesting because we now have the opportunity to ask someone who's actually used, you've actually used cheaper lights. I have. We don't have to mention the brands. No, no brands. What do you see as a difference on the, like is it distance, is it spread, is it everything, is it, what is it? It really depends on what you want. Um, the cheaper lights are a good all round, little bit of spot, little bit of spread. 
Mm -hmm. The immediate area is fantastic. If you're just going up the highway or doing the beach run at night time, it's fantastic. If you want to see quite far ahead, if you're doing a midnight run or you want to see that car that's a couple of k's or a k up the road, these are fantastic because you see the reflection. You might not see it exactly, but you might see but the reflection. You notice something there. Yeah, there's something there. Yeah. And I had a truckie uh, contact me over the CB as I overtook him. I was asking how many lights I had on the front of the vehicle. He was guessing four, six, cup on the roof. And he was absolutely gobsmacked when I told him I had two. Yeah, right. Communications. Right. So that is a GME 6.6 .6 DBI aerial. Universal for what we do. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a problem with it. I've had one stolen off the front of my vehicle. And Just the whip? No, the whole thing. They cut it and they cut the, the wire. <laughs> After your episode the other week, they would have no chance of using it. No. Because they've put a, they've cut it close to the arrow and have to put a join in. Then they're going to have another join, yeah. and it's just going to be terrible. Yeah. That's just stupid. Yeah. You looking at getting any more lights at all? I this, will be. This is enough. At the moment, that's enough. But one of the reasons why I got the sun visor, you can see, mm -hmm. is so I can put a light bar above that and not get the bonnet glare. Ah. So okay. it helps with the sun, and it helps with the Okay. Night time glare. And you want a light bar for bush slow driving or? Bush slow driving if we're looking for a camp at night time. Can light up the area around the sides. We're now talking about donuts. Mmm, donuts. Mmm, I could go a donut. Yeah. Anyway, tyres. Yep, yep. 33s? Uh, 265, 75, so roughly 32, 33, roughly. 32 and a half, yeah. sort of in between there. And we've got the BFG Muddies. Yep, KM2s. They've copped a bit of a hiding. You can see little chips out of the sidewall. I like them. A lot of people think they're overpriced, but I wanted a proven tyre, mm. and they are a proven tyre. Yep, so there's another spot you spent your money. Another spot. Yeah, but they've matters. lasted... I bought a new set when I bought the car, and they've lasted good... Oh, four or five years now. Oh, wow. Okay, so you have so them there for I've a while. I've had them then. for ages, and you can see they're not wearing mm. badly. You're probably getting close to needing new ones, though. Yeah. Four to five years, that's a long time. What's What do you think, then? I rate them. Absolutely. I would absolutely say to get them if you want a good muddy. I probably wouldn't go a mud tire again for what I've been doing. Probably so go an all-terrain. are you looking at, then, next? Have you thought about it? I have. I'll probably go the BF Goodridge all-terrain. Domino doesn't work. <laughs> Rough guess. I think I've done about oh, 40, 30, 40, roughly. Okay. But is this your daily? No. Ah. It was, and I was doing a lot of highway driving on it. I'm muddy, so it was noisy, mm. and that's probably why they're a bit worn. Okay. But right. at the moment, I have a work vehicle, so it, some weekends it doesn't even move, leave the driveway. Fair enough. So That, that explains the locos in yep. four to five years then. Freewheeling hubs. What size rims have you got? They are 16 inch rims. Do you know the offset? Uh, zero offset. So they're pretty smack bang in the middle. Tire PSI highway with this size tires in your vehicle. Right, highway, mm -hmm. 40 pound all round. Okay, that's loaded? Loaded. Like, loaded and unloaded? Yeah, pretty much still the same because I don't take too much away. Okay. So it's fairly, fairly even the whole way around. All right, gravel roads with corrugations. Probably drop it down to 30, 25 maybe, roughly around there, okay. depending depending on how bad the corrugations are. Dirt tracks, mud tracks, rock. Drop it down to 20, it's a pretty safe bet for me, because it gives quite a lot of give and, and these sidewalls are pretty tough. Okay. So uh, 20 is a safe bet for me. All right. And if it gets, like the gravel roads, if it gets worse, I'll drop them more. Fair enough. Sand. Really boggy stuff. Like, let's say, for example, you grew up, Cow Cup Hill. I did Cow Cup at 8 PSI. The rest of the beaches I did are roughly about 10 to 15 pound. Is there a difference between the front wheels and the back wheels of your PSI or all around the same in a shorty? In really soft sand, I tend to leave a little bit more in the front. Just seems to handle, my personal opinion, it seems to handle a little bit better. But I try to keep them roughly the same around each around front and back. The lift, what have we got in it? I haven't touched the suspension in about, well, that since I've owned the vehicle, and I know the previous owner, and he didn't touch it either. So, so as far as I know, it's stock, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, 
How's the handle, like breaking and corn? The handle's really well. It is a bit soft, so when you're going over things, it rolls a little bit. It could do with a suspension upgrade with a, maybe a two inch lift in it, mm -hmm. but that's further down the track. Here we are, under the bonnet. Engine time. Motoring on. We're motoring on through this episode. We're getting there. A non-turbo. Non-turbo TD42, 4.2 litre diesel. Um, good old trusty engine. A lot of people seem to think they're kettles. I haven't boiled one yet, but I don't expect crazy power out of it either. Well, you haven't mucked around with a turbo and all that. No, and haven't haven't bothered. Asking for more out of it. Exactly right. I take I use it as it was intended. Okay. And I don't try and push it. All right. So, in saying that, you're not looking at um, upgrading to a turbo or anything. I was, as everyone does when they buy a GQ. But the more I drove it, the more I grew to know the car. I know how to drive it now. I know how how it works, how I know what its happy spot is. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty happy with how the car operates as is. Okay. So what are some of the things you do have to put up with though? The being, speed? Being a bit of a lag, yeah. The lack of speed. So if I'm going away with Alex or any sort of convoy, they're good five, K, five ten Ks ahead of me. Okay. Going up a hill, especially with a trailer, you do drop your speed. You just have to. It's just fact of life. Fair enough. You've got some cold air intake upgrades here with the snorkel, um, which is a steel snorkel into a moonlight custom fabrication yep. air filter going into your motor. How much difference has that made on your vehicle? Makes a great deal of stuff that doesn't get into the motor. Just going down dusty tracks, everything gets trapped in that and what doesn't gets trapped in that. Yeah, Instead you've got of, double filter now. Exactly right. And as I said, I like to do a bit more touring and remote roads, and mm. they're generally gravel. Yep. So. A lot of dusty, dusty red roads. That's it. Interesting. Okay. So you've, you've got a pre-filter on your, on your air intake. Mm -hmm. You could even go a third filter with I a sock do. on it. Could do. Yeah. Do you find this one getting much dirty? Or any dirt at all? Not anymore. I just had the original, not an original, I had a Safari snorkel on there before. Mm. And this side of the filter would get absolutely caked. Like when myself and Alex did the hole and track, yeah. it was gross by the time I got home. Having two filters though, does that restrict airflow at all? Not really. The pipe's a three inch, four inch, I can't quite remember, but it's quite larger than a normal snorkel. It looks like three and a half, or perhaps even four, yeah. Yeah, so it's more air going in. Okay. There is two filters, but because it's sucking more, more's going through. Okay. Or relatively the same, pretty much, if the filter's blocked. Okay. So the vehicle still feels the same then? Still feels the same. I still get the same fuel economy. I'll we'll probably get more because of a bigger yeah. tank, but okay. same. It's a very, very smart mod. Mm. Two batteries? Yep. Got to have two if you go on remote. Which one's your starter? This is my starter. It's hooked up to a Red Arc smart solenoid mm -hmm. with a push button to link them together if my starter battery carks it. Oh, if it goes flat or whatever? Yep, or if yeah. I leave the ignition on or something. Okay. Extractors, I see? Yep. Now, those extractors are the same for a petrol. Really? So if you notice that pipe on the side. Yeah, yeah. That's for the petrols that have the warm air intake little valve that goes into the air filter. Yeah, right. So the, the extractors are exactly the same you buy for a petrol or mm. for a diesel? Yep. Wow, that's interesting. I learned that from well, the exhaust boat that did my exhaust. And he just said, there's no difference in them. I'm sure someone will argue with me about that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but they seem to work pretty well okay. and they fit. So finally, anything to look out for on a motor like this? Don't expect too much out of it. It is an old forklift engine. Okay. You can turbo them and yes, they will take it. How many Ks? 380. 380. Well, there you go. 380, no turbo, no problems. And this will go, this will go to half a million without a problem. That's a bit dark here, mate. Yeah, thought I'd get away with it. <laughs> no, I got sick of windows, so I decided to replace them. That's cool. Yeah. Saves a lot of arguments of, where did you put that? Who packed that? <laughs> I swear I put it in the back. Man, he can get to everything from here. Absolutely. 
That's a good idea, and both sides as well. All right, well, let's open up the, the back doors, I guess. No worries. Oh, you got the pins there, yep. Yeah. Now, everyone that has a GQ knows this trick. Okay, that's the thing, is it? That's the thing, because they're not the strongest in the hinges. Okay. And they used to have the tires on the on the back door. Ah. So it would droop down a little bit yeah. and it wouldn't sit quite square. So you just got to rattle it a little yep. bit. Yep. All right. Well, what do we got going on here? This looks DIY? No. It's not? Facebook. <laughs> I should have known. Of course. Facebook. Hang on, I can't believe this wasn't the first thing I saw. That is a classic, man. Yeah, man. How old are we talking here? 25 uh, years? Yeah, roughly. Early to mid 80s. It was my grandfather's fridge. He had in his work unit in his caravan. And it got passed down. Still works a treat too. Is that a 40 litre? Um, yeah, I think so. I can't quite remember. Let's have a look what you got inside it. No worries. I'm feeling a bit thirsty too. Nice water or something. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks mate. Um, it does need a bit of refinement, but it does work. Okay. Refinement? I reckon it works pretty well as it is. It's beers, Ronnie. Oh. Help, help yourself. Yeah. Bent spoke. Sprocket. Hope you enjoy a seven percent. Hope you enjoy a strong one. Woo! What a whip. Capital Brewing Co. Mm. Let's get that going. Uh, you know what's special about this beer? What's up? Come out of a twenty-five plus year old fridge. Did. Can you show us how the lid opens on the old ones? Can do. After I put that. Oh, and that that beautiful stubby hole. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, the fridge. You don't see it on the new angles, but it opens up. And it also comes off. Mm, that's bloody handy. So it's awesome for packing, so it doesn't keep hitting you on your head. And when this is up in the car, you can take the lid off and just reach in and grab a beer. That's a good thing, because then you don't have to slide it out on the slide. Exactly. Sweet. It does get tedious when you're going through about 10 to 15 beers. <laughs> They're actually Outback drawers. They were for a GU wagon. Mm -hmm. but they a normal just, size wagon. normal size wagon. They just happen to fit perfectly. Okay. So there's, it's steel frame, there's no wood in it, so if I do try and turn the car into a submarine, they're not going to swell up and okay. turn to crap. They're quite big, these drawers, like this system, isn't it? So it makes you really appreciate the size of a proper size GU, doesn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Mm. All right, you want to open up, mate? Let's have a look. We'll open this one. Your cooking drawer. Yep, cooking and a few other things. Bit of food as well. A little bit of food, the old two minute noodles. Can't go wrong. A lot of grab me gear handy bags. Yep. A couple of frying pans, all important jaffle maker. Um, I've got a toiletries bag in here as well, mm -hmm. in case Mrs. comes around. There's all sorts of goodies in there for her. Is this your go to, jaffle maker? Absolutely. It's been a while since I had a jaffle. They're fantastic. First thing in the morning, Nothing better. Mm. Burning your tongue, burning your mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's if you cook something crap. Yeah. <laughs> Can't taste it. All right. Um, Can I open this one? Yeah, go for it. Up. Ah, the tool drawer. Tool drawer. And I'll just jam my finger. There's a whole heap of stuff in there. All right. So you've, when you guys go away as a convoy, you've pretty much got most of the tools covered, eh? Most of my tools covered, yeah. <laughs> now I've got a lot of stuff, so if anyone needs anything, then there's no, oh crap, I forgot it, or mm. I've just got a lot straight away. Oh, you got the compact Red Rose chair. Yep, that fits nice. Is that your go-to chair? Uh, once, like, when I get to camp, yes. Otherwise, if I'm just pulling up somewhere for a sneaky beer, I'll have the one oh, I was sitting in. Oh, you got the chair out there. Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, recovery gears at the back there. Yep. I think I found this, well, made this thing I think you'll like, if it's in here somewhere. Yeah. So what do you think this is? A boomerang? Yes, a very heavy boomerang. Is it really? No. 
<laughs> it's a cast iron pan oh, holder. Oh, wow. Okay, you didn't show me the connection. I thought so, you had, yeah, right. So that is cool. Put that in the fire, build your little fire around the base. Yeah, that's awesome. Doesn't sit quite level, because obviously the three mm. bits made in the middle. Yeah, right. That, that's a cool idea. But good little tip for a homemade cheap mod. Found on door 4x4 Facebook. <laughs> Along with everything else in the car. Do you mind if I just have a look at this wing? Go for it, mate. Alright. Recovery gear. Yep, you always want it easy to be accessed. Yeah, because the other one was right in the back yeah, of the drawer. I was thinking that. Yeah, this okay. is the emergency, get it quickly, to get to. me out. And that's pretty damn quick because it's right here. Exactly. Ah, and once you're done, you can smell good. Exactly. Yeah. The purpose for everything with this car. Sweet. Do you hide anything on the other side? I do. What's in there? Um, that is the power for the fridge. Okay. And all these little lights that are hanging off the roof rack, power for them as well. And there's another 12 volt socket in there. Cool. And then behind your seats, you still got room to store a whole heap of stuff as yep. well. I've got ground mat, uh, solar blanket, all sorts of stuff that mm. I regularly grab out just behind my seat, so I know where they are. Here yep. we are in the GQ. I've got to say, I've just jumped in. It actually feels really comfortable. This is at a good height. You almost need another one in here. A little yeah. armrest or something. Might look into that. That's quite comfy. These aren't actually GQ seats in it either. They're VR Commodore Ute seats. Ah, okay. They're quite comfortable. Yeah. Um, they're getting a bit old now, so they could do with an upgrade, but. VR Commodore, okay, so that's like a 19. 96, 97. Yeah. The old VR Commodore seats, eh? Mm. Plenty of room here in the footwell, too. Got my Jesus bar. Yep. Don't need that in a GQ because we, we all drive responsibly. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's this one for? That is my ejecto seat. Okay, we won't touch that then. No, that, that one's spotlights. <laughs> you got your radio down here and your other radio here. Comms radio, AM, FM. So I see you like gripping onto wood, mate. Yeah, well, nothing beats a good solid grip on a bit of wood. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, no. How do you feel sitting in, in these seats and, and driving in this car? Pretty comfortable. Everything seems to be at a good height for me, personally. You know, every car you have, it's got to feel right to you. Um, I mean, I've got my phone up here as a navigational thing and I don't, it doesn't obstruct any of my view. Mm. So that's always a bonus. Is your seat higher than mine? I think so. Yeah. And I'm a bit taller too. Yeah. Okay, I'm not used to being shorter. <laughs> Is that your navigation? Yep, so I use Google Maps on the phone. I have the HEMA map book, which is currently on loan to a mate. And I have a HEMA HN5i little unit that sits up here. Ah, uh, that's the old school one that has the mud maps on it too. Yeah, that's the one. It's, it's got Aussie Explorer mud maps and something else. Which one do you use, mostly? I'm not too sure. I haven't used it that much, so I'm still trying to learn the ropes of it. Okay. So I just kind of have it up there to back everything else up. Mm. What I recommend, that old unit, Mud Maps is awesome. Yep. And they removed it on the HN6 and the HN7. Right, okay. But Mud Maps is awesome. Uh, I'll... You got a dash holder up here? Yep, that thing is great. You put all your little passes for your national parks, your wallet, you... I have a set of storms in there. And they're just everything you need to grab, real easy. And the sun visor? Yes. Do you rate the sun visor? 100%. Right now, if we were, if we didn't have it on the car right now, that sun would be in my eyes. Okay. Yeah, true. So it, it works quite well. Um, I used to drive a lot early in the morning to and from work, and that it makes was a huge difference. Huge difference. You can actually see where you're going when the sun's rising. Okay. Because surprisingly, in this G, in the GUs, oh, sorry, the GQs, the windscreen's actually got a bit of an angle. Eh? Yeah, it's Com very. Compared to the GU or uh, your com Cruiser? Com compared to a 79, compared to a Jeep, especially yep. a Jeep. Yeah, Jeeps compared are very straight drives. up, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. It's it's almost as angled as, as an IFS car. Yeah, it's 
Mm. Very angled for a very boxy square car. Yeah. There you go. You just summed up <laughs> everything I was trying to say in like... Three words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and uh, the weight. After he's carved them out? Yes, of course. Okay, I, don't want, I don't want to be out there doing that with him. <laughs> or the Waywin brothers. Because they're, they're all pioneers. They're all doing this way before us. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to, like to learn a few tips and tricks from them. Best trip you've done in the Shorty Patrol? Hmm. Yeah, okay. It's, it's between two. It's the Coral Bay trip I did last September. That was fantastic seeing the Coral Coast. Or going out to the gold fields, doing the Holland Track, going to Rouse Lagoon, Credo Station, all up through there. Um, that was amazing scenery as well. Anything remote where there's no people, it's even better. Yeah. Yeah, that should be a standard answer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Especially when you live in a big smoke too. Yeah. Does this vehicle have a name? <laughs> yes, it does. And the name has a little bit of a story to it. Okay. So the car's called Mickey, and it derived from being called Mick Taylor because a certain YouTube influencer <laughs> confused me with a serial killer when he was introducing him himself. <laughs> Well, it can't be me because you're an influencer. I hate oh, that word. Well, <laughs> YouTube star. <laughs> well, that can't be me either. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know why. I thought your name was Mick. <laughs> so, uh, really, it's called Mickey. It's called Mickey. Wow, I'm honoured. <laughs> yep. To, to be the cause of Mickey Taylor. Oh, my God. Do you have a rifle? No, don't answer that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Ideal camping location, not as in like a spot you're going to name, but ideal camping location. Five element, elements that need to be there. Shade. Love natural shade instead of just using an awning. So we've got trees. Trees. <clears throat> Running water would be great. Oh, it's already sounding pretty damn good. Yep. Me? Flat ground, it's always a bonus. It's not necessity, but it's always bonus. So what's that three? No crows like that. <laughs> Don't go to South Australia then. Yeah. Or WA. <laughs> True. Um, and a good challenging track to get in and out of. Man, that sounds awesome. Mm. Top two bands you listen to while you're driving. You're driving music. What is it? Ooh, now, a lot of people have seen me in band shirts and they tend to love that. I like, I like a good, good variety of heavy metal. So I'll probably say Metallica for one. Oh, you can't go wrong with that. And I'll go Band Called Devil Driver for another one. A very groovy, heavy, fast pace. Just kind of lets me zone out and just enjoy it. Okay. And when you're on a corrugated road, sometimes the drums go in time. So when you see Taylor driving past you out in the highway or on the bush tracks, he's got tunnel vision, he's focused, and don't call him Mick as he passes you. <laughs> <laughs> At what point do you take your bush hat off when you get close to town? At what point? Where's, where's your cut off to take your hat off? Ooh, depends where I'm going. You're coming back. Coming back. Mm -hmm. Or when I walk in the front door. Ah, okay. All right. I got a really bad receding hairline. Okay. So it stays on and it looks like I've got hair because it's out the back. All right, so there we go. That's actually a pretty damn good answer. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Look, if you've got any questions you want to hit up Taylor, about any questions about a GU shorty, or you want to tell them where to get these indicator lights, where can I find you, mate? Instagram? Uh, Instagram, intense underscore Taylor, or you can get in contact through Intense Off Road. Intense Off Road, or you can check out Intense Off Road on YouTube, and you can see what these boys get up to. Cool. All right. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Was that illegal? Corona? Ooh. <laughs> are, we one, are we two metres apart? Uh, yeah. <laughs>